folks. Today we're going to be playing a Graves game. Playing in D1 slash Monsters MMA. And currently doing my default promos on this account. So that's where we're at at the moment. I had a pretty good day of games, as you folks should see on my YouTube channel over the next couple days. Be uploading a bunch of these games and also be bot reviewing them. My Patreon members, so if you're interested in that, then feel free to check it out in the description down below. This game we're going to be looking for three camp clear into top lane. We're playing Graves vs Kindred, so it's going to be a very high tempo game. Given that we're both playing extremely high tempo champions, it's going to be very fun. You see, they've actually opted for the ward early game. Not something you guys are probably going to see in your low elo games, but that is why I often sweep as I come through here because they will look to sneak those wards in. I'm going to take W here because I'm still posturing for a fight topside. If I was looking to go back into a reverse clear or something like that, I would have taken two points in Q though for the enhanced clear speed. Now my bot lane is getting pushed in pretty heavily. Okay there. I like this play a lot. The Necton's not quite level 3 yet. Flash for the kill, and we go on the Kindred here. Oh, my minion blocked on my fucking player, man. I'm so fucking disgusted. <sighs> With that minion block, that is just fucked. off my screen. I don't know why he's still there. That is a really bad play by him. But we should try and stop this Renekton from getting back to lane. That's okay. What the hell? Well, Renekton into that extremely hard. Now I'm not going to do Scuttle Crab here because there's no real point, no benefit. I'm going to quickly base, buy, and going to wait for the pink ward there really quick. Alright, beautiful. Now presumably Kindred is on that bot side mark, which is fine. I'm going to run back to my chickens, which is going to be second spot of my chickens, and go chickens, wolves, into crab most likely. And that will most likely stop Kindred from getting his next set of marks, which will pretty like... What the hell are you doing here, brother? Yeah, um, pretty much crazy. So yeah, I was pretty much on the money with where I wanted to go. Now we're going to quickly take these two camps, and now I'm actually going to rotate up for the crab because it's likely to be the next mark, the crab or the grump. But it's much easier to defend my Gromp from the Mark than the Crab. So if I remove the Crab here, it's likely going to be my Gromp that gets Marked. And that's pretty hard for Kindred to get at this point in time. I'm going to sweep this ward that he's placing. Yeah, I knew he was placing a ward there. That's really good for my top laner. It just creates a bunch more pressure. And I'm also getting that zombie ward there, which is going to be helpful. Alright, and we know it's warded again, which I'll also go and clear in a moment's time. With the Scrying Orb. Backing up far enough, so I'm just gonna chunk him here for a little bit of damage. Beautiful. That is literally the best way that could have been played. Renekton loses his cannon there. He gets hit with two autos and a Q reset, and I didn't damage the wave at all, so the wave is still slow pushing back. That's just huge. Gonna ping out the potential gank route there and then run towards bot side. I wanna go to either bot side gank or straight to my uh Progs. Just we'll figure out what to do as we uh, run back. 
As long as my bot lane don't die here, this is actually a pretty good gank opportunity for me. Just need them to not int. Oftentimes, what you guys will see is like the enemy team or your teammates will just like int right before the perfect gank opportunity, and it's like, why does that even happen? So they have no wards here. Enemy bot lane will be recalling, so I'm actually going to invade the kindred on his blue. As you guys can see, dealing quite a substantial amount of damage, made his bot lane move, and we're still going to take his shit here. And this is just the result of this high tempo matchup being played better on my end. Got two level lead on the Kindred already, and as you folks know from the past YouTube content, Kindred can very easily do this to other champions, just like I'm doing. Now we're going to go to our red buff and also take this mark and then we'll reset and walk towards topside camps. Right now this game is basically over. Two level lead in the top lane due to permafreeze, due to my um, pressure top on the ganks, the two or three successful ganks up there, and then also clearing the wards and basically, you know, chunking Renekton, just keeping him unable to play the game. Like, this Renekton basically can't play the game due to what happened early game. They had a counter gank, the first gank. Everything about this game has been pretty brutal for them. Oh, this is really good too, because I'm here. I just need to play that a tiny bit better. Or I could have flashed for it. If I had known if Orianna had ult, I would have flashed for it. Alrighty, now we know Kindred doesn't have his red buff yet, so I'm going to run straight to his red. Since he's going bot. Killing that crab. And we'll peace out over the wall here. Not sure what Kindred is doing, but this play is pretty bad by him, in my opinion. This will just further cement the lead that I have. Now I have an option here, I can go chickens or I can gank this Oriana. Which I'm actually gonna look for the gank on Oriana just to increase the tempo even more. Keep dropping the ult there. Here's the Kindred, still level 5. Yeah, this game is basically unplayable for them right now. Now I'm going to run straight top here. Again, continuing with these high tempo plays. Potentially looking for the dive. Renekton is level 5. Oh, he just got 6. I'm just too late, maybe. We shall see the... I'm going to tank for my Fiora here. Alright. I feel like she could have uh, you know, potentially got in there a little bit sooner. Anyway... That is okay, you know, we could have done that a bit better, could have denied him more gold, more XP. Um, I could have also, you know, saved my flash, I think, with a little bit better positioning. There's a few issues there. But overall, another pretty good play. And another pretty punishing play. I think this is actually going to be one of the best YouTube videos that I've created. It's super educational for you folks at home. I don't even know if it's worth butter viewing though, because uh, it Clean this fucking. Alrighty, I was gonna. Yeah, pardon me. I should look for the base. Definitely need to look for that base. Now, what do we want next? Um, honestly, let's run with the merc treads here. Oh, nice. My Silas should live here also. Now I'm going to run straight to my chickens. Kindred is likely also going to come to the chickens here, but I think that he's in for a rude awakening. That's an auto attack there though, which is quite bad. Nice, got the cheeky little wall jam with my Q there on that wall. Kindred had ult, he was likely waiting for me to ult, and the reason I didn't Q at him is because I wanted to burst him. 
by queuing the wall there, I burst him, and also it's kind of counterintuitive. He doesn't see me queue him, so he is less likely to ult that. So a little bit of mind games there, folks. And in all honesty, if he ults there anyway, he just dies. It's just delaying his death. He has no one to come and help him. He's Oriana reset. Um, I don't know why Oriana reset there, actually. I think that's kind of bad by her. Um, but obviously, also, I'm not seeing what's on Oriana's screen, so I don't 100% know. It might not have actually been so bad. Maybe she hadn't based in a long time, had no items, etc. So yeah, don't quite know. Just hitting that there for the fleet footwork stack and then moving on through. Okay, so down here. Alrighty, very nice. No chickens there, so we'll just rotate out to this scuttle crab. Really good play there by my Silas. I actually didn't play that, you know, as well as I could have. I missed my ulti. So that play should have actually probably even been better if I played it perfectly. Maybe I also shouldn't have even tried to shoot R and just waited um, to use Bolt as Execute. A little bit hard to say. Anyway, the enemy team should basically just FF here. I don't really see any angle where they win the game. And they'll be doing me a, a really large favor if they FF at 15 for the YouTube algorithm. Might even uh, put it in the chat. See if they would be so kind. But I think that maybe if I put it in the chat, that might make them less likely to actually do that for me. And get the FF in. Now here, I don't think my style should stay. Just leave now, brother. Just don't need to stay any further. You get the uh, late gold too. Right. That's fine. I'm gonna quickly jump over here. I'm gonna take these last two camps and then we'll look for the reset. Oh, they're calling for open top. Yeah, basically, the enemy team wants to, uh, wants to FF at this point. They've decided that it's over. And you'll see this a lot in high rank games. You know, people understand more uh, about the game and, like, have, like, really realistic, you know, kind of expectations of games. Now, I would not recommend that most of you folks at home who are watching these videos are ever thinking about the FF15 angle. I think in low elo. There's just way too many opportunities to come back and you know you really just don't need to all right so like whilst like i'm saying it's probably the right thing for them to do in this game i would definitely say that in the majority of you folks at home's games not the right decision to make and also you know when you're a lower rank player you just want to be utilizing your time a little bit better too you know you want to focus on improving and things like that so you can't be going around ffing if you're trying to focus on improving Ah, we've started throwing. Be classic. And also, folks, as I have said many times, I truly think this is the best build on Kindred. If you're wanting to build Lethality, Duskblade feels very nice. Uh, I think Umbral is absolute dog sh oh, not Umbral, sorry. I think that the other item is absolute dog shit. Where was she? It's fucked. And they're not out having 15, so... Well... This is gonna end, and... Fucking YouTube algorithm will be less happy with me. Anyway, folks, if you haven't already, hit the like button, and you'd like to see more of this content, I would highly recommend you like and subscribe. It helps out a lot with the YouTube algorithm, and also helps me with what I'm doing here. I'd say not everyone on the enemy team wants to FF. And again. Yes, whilst we're just like slowly ending up the game, the other things that I have going on is my coaching program through Patreon. I put one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions there and I also offer people the 
ability to watch my vod reviews of my own games that will be starting that next month. So if you're interested in watching vod reviews of Grey's Kindred games, I would highly recommend checking that out. Please end the game, you fuckers. YouTube algorithm, come on. Dirty dogs. I don't know about it. Alright folks, take care, and I'll talk to you all next time.